Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Today we're going to discuss the biasing that we did for the class AB amplifier, so let's dive in. For a class AB amplifier, there are two common and simple ways that I've seen biasing networks represented. Biasing networks with diodes and biasing networks without diodes. Okay, good start. The diodes are present to help to compensate for temperature effects in the transistors themselves. As silicon heats up, the characteristics of the base emitter junction, which behaves a lot like a diode, also change, specifically the forward voltage. So without diodes present in the biasing network that will change in approximately the same way as inside of our transistor, that means the bias current of our amplifier will change slightly as temperature changes. Of course, as an amplifier is used, it heats up, so this is a real effect that we need to consider. The other approach uses resistors, which don't. No matter what approach is used, the idea is to exactly match the voltage applied across the transistor pair with two times the base emitter junction voltage for a specific collector current at all temperatures. Depending on what method of biasing is used, the real design will not do this exactly. That means that a real class AB amplifier will have a quiescent current that varies slightly with input voltage and or temperature changes. We don't need to worry about all that right now though, but the way that this amplifier is biased results in a quiescent current of 250 milliamps when 12 volts is applied. Um, by the way, uh, never, ever build the circuit that I'm showing you here. Well, I suppose you could. It's like, it's not dangerous or anything, but those transistors will rapidly disassemble themselves in about 10 seconds. Getting back to the point though, I'm trying to buy a class AB amplifier such that it can handle a varying input voltage while maintaining an approximately constant bias current, while maintaining a steady state output voltage near one half the applied voltage. The output voltage bias point is important to maximize output amplitude. Well, all of those factors are important for different reasons. So I found myself trying to do too many things at once, and to be fair, it is possible to do all those things at the same time, but our design will get complex pretty quickly. Complex in this case means a relatively large number of components would be required and the board starts to explode, it's starting to get out of scope for our dev kit. Trying to maintain an output voltage near one half of VCC is very easy if resistors are used to bias the network. However, that means that the current through the biasing network becomes more or less proportional to input voltage changes. More biased current won't hurt signal quality, but it'll cause more power dissipation, and that's not ideal. Too little biased current in our class AB amplifier will start to behave like a class B, so yikes. Now to take this a step further, if we replace one of those two major resistors in that biasing network with a current source, in this case, the upper one, now there's a constant biased current no matter what voltage is applied, but the steady state output voltage will vary. Man, that steady state output voltage isn't critical because we have an output capacitor isolating the load from this DC bias, but that's still not ideal. We're not talking about a little change either. With a simple resistor, output voltage varied between a factor of 50% to 51.5% of the input voltage when compared with V in. So V out is between right around half of the input voltage. Pretty tight regulation considering we only used a couple resistors. That's not bad. Switching over to the current source though, that V out V in ratio changed to anywhere between 26 and 79% of V in. So yikes, that's really not ideal because that asymmetry will cause either the positive or negative half of a sine wave to clip first, depending on what the input voltage. Of course, clipping means distortion and distortion means we've reached the maximum output power while maintaining signal fidelity or signal quality. So that's a great start. We talked through the pros and cons of a few different methods of biasing transistors in a class AB configuration. I think this will really shape some details of the class AB amplifier dev kit, but we're not quite done. So if you like this video and you can't wait for more, let me know by getting subscribed, hitting that like button and leaving a comment down below. A special thanks to our channel members. I really appreciate the extra step of supporting us directly. Coming up soon, we'll be continuing this discussion by discussing input current required for this amplifier and gain of power amplifiers. I can't wait. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching it for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.